Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Doug Wells. I'm your National Membership Director. Thanks so much for attending our uh, membership seminar here. Uh, this is my information that you see on the screen here. Uh, happy to share the slide deck, same as the videos with anybody that would like it, only because the videos are too big to email. But if you want to shoot me uh, an email at the easiest email in DAV history, dwells at dav.org, uh, happy to share this with you. That's also the uh, direct line to my desk there at our headquarters in Erlanger, Kentucky. So don't hesitate to reach out to me if there's anything that we need. Uh, our team in Erlanger stands ready to uh, assist you with all of your membership needs. And if there's something that you call us with that's not exactly in our wheelhouse, we're going to get you with a warm handoff uh, to one of our counterparts that uh, is better equipped to, to help you. So again, no need to take pictures of each and every slide. Uh, feel compelled to do that, I'll, I'll share the slide deck with you. And just about all the videos I'm going to share here are uh, located on DAV's YouTube page. So um, first let me uh, introduce our interim membership committee. Um, our chair, Shannon Sanders from New York, John Walker from Minnesota, and Brenda Reed from Florida. Uh, Steve Press was good today, but please give them a round of applause. Thank you. We do uh, our interim committee do some outstanding work between our conventions for us, and uh, the interim membership committee uh, is definitely no exception. Uh, so again, I've done well. So, uh, like they say in the NFL, the greatest ability is availability. So I really work hard to be available to all of you when you have any questions or concerns about anything related to membership. Um, many, many moons ago. Uh, when my kids were much, much younger, uh, we were coming home from church one Sunday afternoon, and uh, uh, that, uh, those particular set of services happened to be uh, filled with a lot of rum rambunctious kids. Uh, so the noisy parents were having a little more difficult time keeping them, um, uh, keeping them quiet or reverent. And, and uh, so on the way home, I, I had a conversation with my kids who were very young at the time, and I asked uh, one of my older kids, Logan, I said, so why is it important to be reverent in church? And he said, well, Dan, uh, people need to be able to hear the lesson. Oh, good answer. If I ask my daughter the same question, oh, why is it important to be reverent in church? <clears throat> and she said, people need to be able to feel the lesson too. Okay. And so now my chest is really sticking out. I'm feeling really good about being a dad right about now. And I asked my youngest, Eric, he was about four at the time. I said, son, why do you think it's important to be reverent during church services? And he said, so we don't wake up the people that are sleeping dead. <laughs> From the mouth of babes, right? Uh, so hopefully I don't put you to sleep with anything today. Uh, I got a lot of information to pass to you. And, and again, certainly, uh, you know, I'll try to stick around for as long as I can. I know we have another meeting after this. So I have to clear the room pretty quickly. Uh, but the interim membership committee stands ready to help. Uh, collect uh, any questions that, that, that you might have, answer any that they can, uh, and they'll certainly forward your questions on to us as we uh, uh, try to expedite our meeting here. Uh, I want to share a quick uh, member highlight with you. It's been a while since we've showed anything like this, uh, but I want this to inspire you uh, with respect to having a call to action here. When we personally connect with prospective members out there, it makes us so much more successful in our recruiting endeavors. So if there's someone out there that you know that is doing an outstanding job as a DEV member, uh, promoting a positive image in the organization, they're an outstanding volunteer or a driver or uh, any of the, the niche things that we have, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, small business employers, uh, small business owners, that sort of stuff. Certainly, please uh, let me know, let me hear their story, what they're doing uh, out in our communities. You all know the lay of the land much better in your communities than I do from my position at National Headquarters. So share that stuff with me, and who knows, maybe one of those folks could be uh, one of our next member highlights. But let me share this with you real quick. This is, uh, I just love this one. When we got there, our job became the point. We 
Hamburg and being a part to study out. And uh, the first obstacle was the airfield. Because the airfield was protected by a great number of airboxes. We call them bunkers today, the boxes there. And they were reinforced concrete. And hitting them with a bazooka or a piece of artillery wouldn't do anything to them except I'd box some holes in them, maybe. But uh, we couldn't get through because they had all the advantage. We're an open territory there and enclosed structure. So that's where the flamethrowers came into use. And we attempted several times during the day to break through this line of your boxes and we had lost a tremendous number of Marines. Uh, my commanding officer was down to himself and two officers and and most of our squad leaders were gone. So he called me to get in a big shell breaker. And at that point in time, he asked me if I thought I might be able to do something. I was able to figure it out that in my company. And could, could I do something about the gear box we were paying for? Because we had not attempted that at that point. So he gave me the Marines to uh, protect me as I would be working toward the gear box. During the course of about four hours, uh, I was able to eliminate the enemy within seven of them and that opened a path so we could break through. And once we got behind them, then we had the advantage. They could shoot at us from the back of the buildings. As well about that day, I don't remember. And uh, I lost two Marines, two of those individuals of, of the four that I had, that he had assigned to me to protect me. Uh, they, they gave their lives that day. Most of them that have been in combat, when they get home, it's what they don't want to think about. But I've always advocated, and still do, that the best thing they can do is look with other veterans of a similar experience and talk about it. Because you're finding out that you're not the only guy in this world that's had the same kind of experience. So uh, I realized if they don't belong to this organization, like the DEV, if they don't have membership, they're not going to be effective. Great stuff, right? We uh, unfortunately lost Woody a while ago, uh, but he, uh, he did live long enough to see his grandson graduate from Marine Corps boot camp, so that was pretty awesome stuff. And talk about no pressure there. Uh, yeah, my grandfather was a CMH winner, right? Um, but uh, yeah, if you have interesting folks that have interesting stories out there doing great stuff for DAV, please don't hesitate to uh, refer them to me so we can talk to them and potentially make them the subject of one of our member highlight videos. Just uh, want to touch real quick on Membership March Madness. Uh, for those of you that might not know, uh, this is an effort uh, that's, you know, we kind of put uh, a little bit of friendly competition out amongst the departments, uh, but it's an effort led by the departments. Uh, they're, uh, they rally their chapters to the cause, um, and we kind of um, set the departments up in a bracket style tournament uh, in the month of March uh, to kind of encourage um, uh, membership recruitment. The idea here is I'm trying to set a psychological seed so that when you start seeing things on the news about the conference tournaments or uh, <clears throat> the NCAA tournaments that will remind you, yeah, we need to, to uh, start taking a look at our membership goals to make sure, uh, you know, we're on track to meet goal before the end of the membership year, which is June 30th. So it's a nice way to kind of create some competition and, and uh, achieve a goal at the same time. So there's a couple ways departments can be recognized uh, by fully, uh, by uh, uh, getting from bracket to bracket to bracket, front to back without being eliminated, they would become the tournament, uh, tournament champion and win the very beautiful cup there, tournament cup that you see. But if a, a department has an off uh, couple few days, then they can uh, still be recognized by recruiting the most overall members on a percentile basis against their goal uh, and win that obelisk as the department MVP. And 
Uh, not to forget the effort of our individual recruiters out there, the, our top two recruiters who uh, recruit uh, 25 or more members during the tournament will also be recognized with really nice engraved iPads. So um, kind of cool uh, event that we put together, I don't know, five or six years ago, and uh, it still continues to grow strong. But the real impetus behind this is, is twofold. One, we know that when we sign someone up online with a credit card, um, one of two things happen. Either they have a much higher proclivity just to pay for their membership, their full life membership out of the gate, or they convert to full life member at a much higher rate because it's fire and forget, right, with the uh, credit card installments. So all the data tells us if we can get somebody signed up online with a credit card, they are much more likely to become a full life member of the community. That's the ultimate goal. Um, <clears throat> so with the March membership and this tournament, the only uh, applications that count are those that come in online. So whether you use your recruit aware link or just go to joindab.org or however you sign up online is okay. Um, and that'll count towards your department's uh, effort during March membership matters. Uh, this most recent year, for 2024, Virginia was our tournament champion. Champion, Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, and during that period of March 10th to Mar March 30th, uh, Wyoming was, again, our MVP. So let's give a hand for Wyoming. <laughs> Remember, these tournaments, again, are designed to be a percentile basis against your goal. So you don't have to be one of the larger uh, departments to win the championship. Uh, Nebraska has won it in the past. Smaller departments have won this in the past. And like happened this year, the rewards can often split. So uh, just again, trying to encourage folks to get out there to think about their membership goals uh, before it gets too late in the membership year, which runs from July 1 to June 30. So our comms team does a great job of putting videos together. I've, I've uh, um, sprinkled a couple few of our videos throughout this presentation, but they just do a tremendous job of helping us communicate our mission um, and our uh, the necessity of having a, a strong membership uh, ranks to be able to continue to carry forward our, our message of service and hope. Uh, not only into the communities, but into the halls of Congress. So uh, they do a great job of, of helping us uh, facilitate that. So I wanted to share one of the mo more recent videos that they uh, that they helped us put together. What can DV membership mean for you? <laughs> As you consider joining DAD, you may wonder what a membership means for you. Your DAD membership comes with access to our Member Advantages program and a lifetime subscription to DAD Magazine. But a DAD membership can amount to so much more. Your membership dues help DAV departments and chapters in states and communities nationwide provide no-cost services and programs such as claims assistance, rights to VA medical appointments, and outreach to homeless and at-risk veterans. Finding a local DAV chapter is a great way to connect and give back with others who know what it means to serve. Participate in local events and activities, and you will have the opportunity to form lasting friendships with other veterans. These bonds can provide valuable support and camaraderie, helping you feel more connected to your brothers and sisters in arms. As a DAD member, you can continue your service to our country by getting involved and directly helping others in your community. Volunteer to ensure your fellow veterans get the care and support they need. DAV membership also gives you the ability to advocate for veterans legislation that will affect you directly. When you join DAV, you lend your voice and your perspective to a chorus of over 1 million veterans across the nation. That voice is essential as DAV pushes elected officials to do right by those who've sacrificed.
So, what will a DAV membership mean for you? Your membership is what you want to make. So, we thought it was really important to get this message out. Um, you know, as DAV continues to grow all of our programs and services and the breadth of what we do encompasses more and more, uh, it can be a little intimidating and overwhelming, especially to a, a newer member. Um, you know, and I've had some of our newer and younger folks, uh, you know, compelled to ask me the question, do I have to participate in all this? And absolutely not. You can uh, pick a, a specific niche or two that you want to uh, participate in. Some people are all about going to the Winter Congress and, and uh, roaming the halls of uh, uh, our capital and uh, putting our elected officials in headlocks. I love that. Um, other people, you know, want to drive the vans. Uh, I think you heard Barry mention we've driven to the moon and back, what, 17 times, I think you said now, whatever it is. But, uh, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that our folks can engage in. And by no means are they required to feel compelled to participate in every single program and service that we have, right? Uh, but we certainly want to make sure that we're uh, allowing people to serve in the best way that they can. Um, so encourage that and, and um, you know, we want to be welcoming to as many folks as we possibly can because you've heard me say it a hundred times, we're always stronger together. So um, let's talk a little bit about goal, uh, goals and hotlists. I just want to remind folks of a couple of things. Um, not going to beat this to death too much, but it's important to touch on it occasionally. Um, so remember, we modify our membership goal uh, metrics a couple few years back. We used to be able to pay off a membership when a membership paid off that would count toward, toward goal. That's not the case anymore. Uh, that was creating some disincentivation for folks to recruit part life members. That's not what we want. We want to get out there and proselytize the good word of DAV to the masses, right? So, uh, you know, new part life and new full life memberships count towards goal. If we can get somebody in the door at 325, perfect. That's a you know that's a grand slam, right? But if somebody can't afford 325 dollars, we definitely don't want to discourage them from joining. I would still work hard to be comfortable with our online rec recruiting tools and try to get them, uh, allow them to take advantage of the 10 dollar a month installments. People seem to to really enjoy that. Um, but uh, certainly, we want to get them in the door as a full life member as quickly as possible. For my recruiters out here, uh, I'll, I'll just make a note. Remember, somebody isn't considered a member until we collect at least $40 from them. So if we sign them up on that $10 installment plan, please re remind them that they won't see their membership card for four months, okay, until we collect four payments, essentially. Uh, but we'll get that out to them right away. So. You know, if somebody uh, is concerned about that, there's other, you know, uh, installments that they can select that will get it to them quicker. Uh, so goals are, are now also based on our uh, prospect hot list. So we're no longer assigning kind of arbitrary goals to individual chapters. Again, we don't, uh, we don't count part life members against chapters anymore. That's kind of how that formula ended up working out that we used to use. Uh, but what we do is we base our membership goal now on a real world metric, where our prospective members live, right? So if you're the chapter in Killeen, Texas, uh, where you can't throw a rock without hitting a veteran, your goal is going to be a lot higher than a chapter in Eastern Rhode Island, where maybe the membership or the veteran population is not as high. Um, and, and I'm only saying that uh, Rhode Island because it's smaller, but you get what you um, so we want to make sure that we're uh, capturing as many of these folks as we can, inviting them to our ranks. Um, so I provide you with, uh, I can provide you with what we call our hot list, which are our most, um, our freshest, most viable prospective members. Uh, I'm not putting people on the hot list who've been solicited by national headquarters 25 times and for whatever reason have uh, never decided to pull the trigger on becoming a member, right? So uh, these are people that I've maybe touched once, twice on the outside chance. Maybe they received a digital campaign or something like that. So 
very uh, new members, uh, prospective members there. Uh, so you can get the hot list from us. So I'm trying to couple uh, the tools to be successful to recruit new folks along with the reality of where they are, right? So uh, we've had some chapters be very creative in how they use the hot lists. Um, one, one of the ways that some of these chapters have operated is they've, once a quarter-ish, uh, they take a few names from the hot list, they'll have a truncated meeting, uh, share a, a quick meal or something, and then pair off two by two and go knock on a few doors and say, hey, we're from the DAB. We want to check on you. How's your claim going? Are you getting to and from your medical appointments? Okay. Do you have any volunteer opportunities for us? We'd like you to come to the fishing derby, whatever it is. And I tell that to people sometimes, they look at me like I got a third eyeball in my forehead, but it works. You might get a few doors slammed in your face, and I know everybody's not a natural salesman, but that's the reason, you know, uh, pool salesman and the security guy, salesperson, you know, they come around uh, in the neighborhoods and go door to door because they may get 10 door slammed in their face, but then one person brings them in and, and buys the product, right? Um, and also on top of that, even if somebody doesn't, isn't interested in talking to you at the moment, you've planted the seed for that person to go, hmm, that's a DAB, they're checking on you. They're not wanting anything from you right now, right? So, and that's the key to demonstrate that DAV is a service first organization we always have been, we always will be, and you've planted that seed and people are much more amenable to giving you 325 bucks or writing you a check or whatever it is, once you demonstrate to them that we are a service first organization, we are here to help them first and foremost. Um, <clears throat> using the hot list to send out uh, just very inexpensive postcards and inviting them to an event. You don't have to send the whole hot list. Some of these hot lists are 100,000 names they can be, right? So uh, we want to make sure we're, we're being smart about how we're doing this. There are also um, some mechanisms that you can use to ensure that you're getting good points of contact, that somebody has a move, that sort of thing. Again, some, uh, when we get the hot list and we take a look at it and make sure it's all good to go, people can move after we get the list, that sort of thing. So that can happen. Uh, we're looking at some ways to try to, uh, to, try to mitigate that, but certainly, uh, we want to be smart about how we're, how we're using our hot lists. Uh, there's also services that you can get very cheaply at the chapter level, which is a, uh, it's, it's a good expense uh, to plug people into a system, you know, the white pages online, things like that. There's a small fee for that uh, to make sure you're uh, getting a good phone number and just make some call, phone calls, do a, a telephone thing. We've had some chapters do that. I did that when, we were, when I was back in Michigan as an adjunct member chapter. Uh, so there are techniques out there that you can do uh, to take really uh, good advantage of the hot list. So how do you get the hot list from us? A couple of different ways. You can use the membership list request form, which is on um, uh, the member resources section at DAB.org. Uh, you can just give us a call at the 888 number there. That's directly to membership. My team will get you hooked up ASAP. Or just email membership at DAB.org. Uh, you know, again, uh, worst comes to worst, just uh, shoot uh, uh, dwells at dab.org an email and I'll get the team on for you, okay? Uh, typically speaking though, if you mail membership at dab.org, they turn things around a little bit quicker than I, I do, so really appreciate my team there at headquarters. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder, life membership dues have increased to $325 as of January 1st. Uh, we are still getting old applications with the old amounts into national headquarters. I got one that said $250 the other day. We haven't used a $250 ad application in years. So uh, please do me a favor, go home, share with the folks, throw your old applications away. It is not a waste of money. There's nothing like that going on. Pitch those bad boys and put in a chapter supply request for new membership applications. And we will get those out to you ASAP. Plus those uh, printable PDFs, if they have to have a physical application, those printable PDFs are also available uh, on member resources under the Quick Links tab uh, under Elected Officer Resources. Um, you know, historically, um, National has recruited anywhere from 75 to 80 percent of all of our members towards any particular membership year's goal. 
uh, and our grassroots recruiters uh, typically account for about 20 to 25 percent. We haven't made goal since before COVID. We haven't made our national goal. We've had some individual chapters, we've had some departments that have made goal, but as an organization, we have not made our membership goal since before COVID. Uh, both national and our um, our grassroots recruiters, we got pumped during the COVID year, COVID year both sides. Uh, our national service offices were closed for a good chunk of the time. Uh, people were not in a joining uh, mood during COVID, right? They were in a donating mood. Donations were going out the roof, but people weren't trying to join organizations. Uh, our chapters were closed for sometimes up to two years. They weren't meeting, uh, other than maybe just having a Zoom call occasionally together. But uh, uh, it, it's been rough. So. Uh, on the national side, and obviously we've got resources and all that stuff, but we've recovered. We're doing uh, the national thing. Uh, our grassroots recruiters, uh, we need to reinvigorate that, and that's kind of the theme that you're seeing with us right now. When I took the reins um, at national headquarters as a membership director, we had over 4,000 individual recruiters throughout the country. We're about 2,000 now. So uh, we need to inspire our more casual members, maybe members that aren't as hardcore uh, to recruit. Uh, even if they're just recruiting one or two members a year, that adds up, it helps. Uh, I'll talk about the, the recruiter uh, rally here in a, in a bit, but uh, you know we need everybody that's capable of recruiting to recruit. Uh, we've got all these arrows that we put in our recruiting quivers, uh, we've got the hot list, we've got all these tools. If there's any concerns or questions about how to use them to make your chapter successful with, uh, with your recruiting endeavors, don't hesitate to call us. Uh, if you can't get a hold of me, by all means, you can call uh, our membership manager, Heather Kohlmeyer. My assistant uh, answers all the membership assistant emails. If she uh, can't answer a question, she'll give it to me and I'll answer, but you are not in this alone. Um, anything we can do to support you, uh, if you're going to an event, uh, whatever it might be, or just in your normal um, uh, recruiting activities, please let me know. Plus also for you departments out there, if you have an even bigger meeting, a district meeting, uh, and you'd like me to jump in and do a webinar, I'm happy to do that. Just just uh, shoot me an email and I'll get authorization from, from the boss and we'll make that happen uh, for you. Um, you know, I think uh, that's one of the greatest tools that we have, and that's one of the biggest silver linings of COVID is it got us comfortable with Zoom technology uh, or video uh, call technology so that we can uh, be a little more available to you all. <clears throat> so happy to jump in one of your meetings if that's something that you all think would help. So we raised membership dues at the beginning of the year again, and I know there was a little bit of anxiety um, but I'm gonna share again with the uh, with you the membership dues video that we did. Again, everything that we do, we uh, really kind of structure, uh, pardon me, structure for social media purposes. Uh, so quick hitting, 45 seconds to a minute and a half. Um, if you're like me, anything longer than that, online, my eyeballs, glass over, rolling on the back of my head. So I, I want everything to be quick hitting. All of this stuff, uh, with the exception of the last video, is available on our YouTube page, uh, and it's also a click away on our recruitment resource that I'll share with you here in a minute. But this is our membership news video, and if you get asked that question, I don't want you struggling for an answer. Here's the answer. That's the whole point of the recruitment resource. Uh, you should never have to struggle for an answer. But I know there was a little bit of anxiety associated with uh, us increasing the dues to 325. Uh, and that, just to be frank, that probably won't be the last increase, right? We're still the best deal in town as a, as a large VSO, uh, but we have to accommodate uh, the, uh, the programs and services that we're providing and make sure that the Life Membership Fund is adequately uh, stabilized and, and funded. So our distribution back out into the communities where our members live continue. Uh, but here's a, a quick uh, video that you're able to share on membership. Military service ingrains in all of us that we are stronger together, and membership in DAV builds upon that precept by leveraging our strength in numbers to empower us through camaraderie and legislative action. 
But did you know that you're also helping fellow veterans with your DAV membership dues? Well, part of your dues helps produce DAV Magazine, which keeps you informed about topics important to you and your family. A portion of these funds are also redistributed to your departments and chapters to directly support DAV programs and services offered in your community. Membership dues can help purchase vehicles that transport veterans to and from VA medical appointments. They can provide supplies for service officers and support initiatives to assist homeless veterans. And they can be used to support our incredible network of volunteers as they help take care of those who serve our nation. But most importantly, your local DAV leaders help decide how these funds are used as they identify the greatest needs of the veterans in your area. DAV's programs and services are free to those who use them, and membership dues are one way we all help ensure DAV continues to be there in your community, fulfilling our promises to the men and women who served. Thanks for making a direct impact in the lives of fellow veterans. For more information, check out our annual report here. So again, I, I, I don't want you struggling for, for answers. Everything that we have is either contained on our YouTube page or uh, referenced in the, the uh, uh, recruitment resource. Recruit a lawyer is the easiest, safest uh, way for you to recruit. Again, it's an online tool. You only need to sign up for it once, but you can sign up for it as many times as you want. Uh, you'll get the same uh, link, recruitment link, and QR code uh, every time you plug in your, your membership number. Uh, the greatest thing about Recruit a Lawyer is that you never have to put in your sponsorship information on a membership application. You, you generate your link, you can do this from your phone, you plug in your membership number one time, you copy the, and paste the link in your notes. When you encounter somebody uh, in a recruitment uh, setting, you text that link to them, you can email it to them, you can share it via social media, however you want to use it. Um, and it's a totally secure way for them to sign up from their own device. This way they're not putting their credit card information into your device and feeling uncomfortable. So what I do is I either have a picture of my QR code saved to my pictures of my phone and my favorites, or I just text my link to them and they go to the same place. Um, folks <laughs> sign up, put their credit card information in their own device uh, as a platform. <coughs> That way they don't have to worry about anything uh, fishy at, even though it's not done. Um, you know, it's nice that uh, they have that peace of mind and they're a little more amenable to doing that uh, that way. If you have a problem generating your uh, recruit or leak or QR code, again, just give us a call at the membership department at National Headquarters and we'll get you squared away, okay? Um, the one thing I will caution you is if you share uh, your uh, recruit or link via Facebook or X or some other social media platform and your friends with other DAV members who are also trying to recruit, they need to make sure they get their own recruit aware link because if they share your link and somebody signs up, you're going to get credit for it. So maybe you don't want to tell them that. I don't know. So, um, who here has seen The Princess Bride? Wait, raise your hand. One of my favorite movies of all time. Anigo Montoya is the greatest most effective communicator in cinema history, all right? And we can take inspiration from Inigo Montoya. Uh, you know, if you remember his favorite line, favorite line, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father, prepare to die. So it was a polite greeting. He gave his name. He gave his per relevant personal link. And he helped the individual he was talking to manage expectations. Right? Here you go. So those, those are the four main things that you need when you have a recruitment encounter. Um, you know, you want to personalize the meeting. So first we're introducing yourself. Um, then you let them know who you are. And then what the personal link is. So for me, um, any of my money buddies in here, raise your hand. There you go. So I would, if I'm recruiting him, I would say, hey, Jari. I'm Doug Wells. You became Miller injured in the Marines. You need to be a member of the So that'll work with us charges, right? So um, personalize it though. That's that's what you're wanting to do. Not everybody is a terrific salesman. I, I get that. Um, I wasn't a great salesman, salesman either. But um, I want to give you the tools 
that you need to be successful in those recruiting endeavors. And the way you do that is with the DAV recruitment resource. This is found, uh, again, under member resources under the publicity tile. Um, there's two versions of it. There's a digital version that you can save to the home screen on your phone or pad. And there's also a printable um, PDF version uh, that you can use also if you want to print out a few copies of it, have it in your recruiting folder or whatever. Um, so embedded within the DAV recruitment resource is not only an elevator speech that, again, communicates the purpose of the, of the conversation, but it also gives you answers to just about every frequently asked question that you could come up with. The interim membership committee and I probably spent hours and hours and hours going over that uh, to make sure we covered every single area. If you think we missed something up there, send me an email and I'll get it added, okay? But uh, I don't think, I haven't had any complaints that we've missed anything with respect to the resource. But what's very cool is within each fact, there is a link, a hyperlink, to either an explainer video uh, on DAV's YouTube page or uh, a site reference. So if somebody clicks, say they have a question about uh, DAV's employment program, there's a blurb, a blurb there, but then uh, there's also a link that takes them to the employment site. But Doug, if I'm using a paper, a PDF version, how can I get to that information because you can't click on a piece of paper and launch a website, right? On the paper version, there is a QR code that they can scan with their phone that takes them to a link tree that has all the same information. So you may not be uh, technologically savvy like that, not feel comfortable with it, but again, I would encourage everybody to make the effort to get there. Uh, but if you're more comfortable with the printable PDFs or if you're passing some of these out, this is a great resource if you're like at a county fair or something like that, uh, have a bunch of these printed off. Um, <clears throat> you know, they can still get access to the uh, explainer videos and, and uh, site references. So it is just an awesome tool. Uh, I think it's the, the greatest innovation that DAV's put out in quite a while, and I'm really super proud of it and proud of the uh, Inner Membership Committee for all the great work that they did on this. Can you give them another round of applause for that? So here's a, a quick video that is also available uh, on the publicity tile, co-located with these uh, resources. Um, it's not a how-to video, it's just kind of an inspirational video that shows how it's supposed to be used. I highly recommend making this a point in one of your chapter meetings, uh, showing the video and having some of these out there, uh, you know, so that uh, folks know this resource is out there. I, I really feel like it's being criminally underutilized. Uh, all of the folks that are consistently using the DAV recruitment resource are just blowing their personal recruitment goals out of the water. <sighs> At over 1 million strong, DAV members are the lifeblood of the organization. That's why recruiting new members is so important. Your ability to get your fellow veterans to join DAV takes continued familiarization with all facets of our mission and life-changing services. The DAV recruitment resource is designed to help set you up for success. You can find digital and printable versions of the recruitment resource on DAV.org. For quick access to the recruitment resource, save a link to the home screen of your phone or tablet. When time is short, start with the elevator speech. It's a concise overview of the importance of a DAV membership. The rest of the guide is designed to answer potential members' most frequently asked questions. The digital version provides links to web pages, forms, videos, and other resources, while the printable version has a QR code that veterans can scan to pull up links to those same items. Don't forget to give potential members your Recruit Warrior link or QR code to easily sign up from their own device. DAV is always looking to add new members, and with your help, we will continue to help keep our country's promises to the men and women who serve. So I know Cody shared that during his uh, his report this morning. Uh, so when the 
executive director of national headquarters and the national membership director share something with you the same day, that tells you it's pretty important. So really uh, share this with the folks back home and, and I have no doubt that we are gonna just pummel our uh, individual and collective uh, membership recruitment goals. So I know, uh, you know, the carbs for lunch are probably kicking in here right about now. Uh, so I'm gonna give us a little bit of a, of a sugar boost. Say hello to my granddaughter, three weeks old. I'm a proud father. So a little bit of personal privilege there. Um, this won't be in the slide deck that I should have, but I thought everybody saw it. <laughs> but she's awesome. She's already got me just wrecked. Um, so recruitment points. Um, regardless of how you recruit, you're gonna get DAV recruitment points. But here's the common theme. When you recruit folks online, you can earn up to three points instead of just two. So when you use a paper application, you get one point for someone becoming a part life member. Uh, if they become a full life member or convert to full life member, you get two points, right? You sign somebody up online, you get two points automatically. And then a third point when they convert to full life membership. So you're leaving DEV points on the table if you don't sign somebody up online. So really work hard to get comfortable with our online resources. Also share with the folks that the older points are expiring uh, now on a three year rolling basis. We always uh, redeem and expire your oldest points first, but I don't wanna lose these points. Just like any other rewards program, this, this is read on the ledger. A DEV point is essentially a buck, okay? So I want you to use these points. Don't save them for 10 years because you're gonna come back and only have three years worth of points. Okay, I want you to use these points. If you're not wanting to buy something for yourself, buy something for the chapter or new member incentives, whatever you want to do, uh, but use these points. You don't have to wait for the big store to come here to convention or some other event. You can go to davstore.org, give them a call, shoot them an email, uh, and they will uh, uh, ensure that your points are, are appropriate and they get them redeemed for you and get your, your uh, merch mailed out to you. We love you being walking more billboards for DAV as well. So use these points, don't let them expire. Um, just wanted to mention briefly, I had, I had my mydav.org and websites seminar on Friday, but just for those of you that couldn't make it, we'll get those, um, those uh, slide decks posted uh, so you don't miss out. But I just want to remind everybody in case you couldn't make it to the, to the uh, program on Friday, the new websites are out there. Membership is your point of contact for websites. If we can't figure something out for you, we'll get with our IT folks to, to get you squared away. But uh, uh, we are your resource for websites. If you're a website, if you're, pardon, if you're a webmaster on the old membership portals, uh, you're now the webmaster for the new site as well. Uh, if you have problems accessing or we need to appoint a new webmaster, again, just give us a call. We'll walk you through how we do that, okay? Um, also, just real quick, by a show of hands, how many people in here are registered for my DAV.org? Awesome, good stuff. Yeah, so remember, even if you're not an elected or appointed officer, I still want you registered for my DAV.org. You can do all sorts of stuff for your own membership, updating your service record, point of contact information, all that good stuff through my DAV.org, okay? Uh, but what's more important is there will be no scrambling at the very last minute if you do get elected or appointed to a position that enjoys the uh, expanded capabilities of MyDAV.org. You don't have to wait for the couple few days that it takes us to get you validated into the system. All right, especially if you, it happens on a Friday and you can't get the request in until Monday or whatever. So uh, be sure to uh, have yourself registered and then it's, you know, it's no problem once you, uh, um, get uh, appointed or elected to a, one of those other officer positions. Um, having a lot of great uh, feedback on our member advantages program. Uh, if you recall, we only had uh, maybe a baker's dozen worth of vendor partners uh, that provided uh, member benefits, as we used to call them, discounted services, that sort of stuff. Um, now, through a partner called Access, we literally, we are literally able to offer to our members and the auxiliary as well, tens of thousands of discounted services. 
And for a lot of the services like travel, vacation, stuff like that, some of those proceeds come back to DAD that we use to further DAD's programs and services out in your community. So it's a win-win-win. Um, all you got to do to have access to um, to uh, DAV's My Deals program is be a member of the DAV of the Auxiliary. Uh, you go to, to DAV.EnjoyMyDeals.com, uh, put in your membership number, an email address, and you create a password. Uh, once you sign up, you're good to go. You go out and download that blue My Deals app there at the bottom, and you log in with the email and password that you just now created. So we send uh, the membership numbers to them very frequently. Um, if you just, if you're a new member, give it a couple few days and you'll be able to access it this way. Okay, uh, but we're having, you know, just tons of members utilize this program. It just really makes my heart swell. Just a small token of uh, our appreciation for their membership. So, Nancy, did you see him here on me? Please give a round of applause for our national commander, Nancy Espinosa. Please see I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, so, uh, coming to the end here, but uh, if you're looking for a tax deliverable way to donate, um, let me encourage you to, to take a look at the Warriors Club. So, not only does it help stabilize DAV's life membership fund, it, go, it goes in part to help uh, support DAV's uh, DAV department programs, uh, and it also supports DAV at the local level, uh, you know, the van rides and all the other services and programs that we project in the communities. This is an exclusive way for DAV full life members to donate to the organization. So we obviously want people to become full life members first. But again, if you're looking for a, a great way to donate in a tax deductible fashion uh, to DAV or to any if you're just looking for tax deduction, then certainly uh, uh, consider the Warriors Club. If you go down to the fundraising booth downstairs in the expo area and become a Lawyers Club member for uh, no less than $21 a month, they've got a, a, a D exclusive DAV Warriors Club pin that they're gonna give you right there. And you'll also have access to this very sexy merch that I'm rocking today. So uh, love, to, love to have as many of you be Warriors Club members as possible. I know Cody mentioned this as well, and I'm very grateful that he did. Um, the DAV Recruiter Rally. So, just a quick sizzle reel. So um, basically, we want to encourage our more casual members, again, recurring theme, to recruit just one or two people, right? Um, if we can get our recruiter numbers up, I think that's going to help us uh, be exponentially more successful. Can you imagine if during the 24, 25 membership year, we get 10,000 more recruiters to recruit just one person each? We would blow our membership goals out of the water. So encourage everybody that you see that's a, a DAV member or an auxiliary member to recruit just one person. One paid member is all it takes to get the entry into the recruiter route. Um, if you recruit 100 people, you're just going to get one entry into the recruiter route. Unlike the recruiter warrior challenges, we're going to have another one here in the fall. If you use your recruiter warrior link to sign people up, for each person that you sign up, you get one entry into the drawing. So if you sign up 20 people during the Recruiter Warrior Challenge, you got 20 entries in the drawing, thereby increasing your, your uh, odds of winning the drawing, so for a thousand bucks. But this is 2,500 bucks, airfare, lodging, chow, uh, and 2,500 bucks because baby needs a new pair of shoes, right? So hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, all of you will take advantage of that. The key here is on the Recruiter Rally, you also don't need to do it online. I can use paper applications for this. But, but, if I can't read your sponsorship number on that application, it don't count, okay? Um, so, Shannon says she'll put hers on there. Um, but, uh, 
Um, I want you all to, to participate in any way that makes you feel comfortable. Again, the safest way to ensure you get credit is to do it with your recruiter wireless.